On today's episode, we've got the latest updates on the Starship timeline, SpaceX training for the first commercial spacewalk, good news and bad news at the Boring Company, another setback for Giga Shanghai, and Tesla calls it quits in India. So let's get going. SpaceX president and COO Gwen Shotwell has updated the timeline for Starship's first orbital launch, now saying that the launch pad at Starbase Texas should be ready for a first attempt as early as June or July. SpaceX has been moving at a rapid pace to clear all of the necessary testing for a safe launch of the Starship and Super Heavy booster. However, there are still factors beyond the company's control that will inevitably determine their launch timeline, such as the FAA environmental assessment. Bureaucracy is slow at the best of times, but this particular case is further complicated because SpaceX is not only attempting to get launch certification for a brand new orbital launch pad at Boca Chica, Texas, they're also trying to get a launch license for the largest and most powerful rocket ever designed. So it was inevitable that the end of May date CEO Elon Musk predicted earlier this spring was probably just wishful thinking. However, that isn't to say the federal agency isn't working and making progress. Just a few days ago, the FAA released an update to their programmatic environmental assessment of Starbase that showed four of the five processes had been completed. Apparently, the FAA believes the assessment will be completed by the end of this month. Yes, they have been saying this for the past three months, but they actually have some evidence to show this time. Now, the PEA being successfully completed doesn't necessarily mean that the FAA will issue a license. SpaceX still needs to meet FAA safety requirements for Starship to launch. And even if the FAA hands out a launch license in time for the summer window, SpaceX still has to complete the Super Heavy booster and Starship by then. Testing is going fast, but the company has yet to fit a booster with a full array of Raptor 2 engines, meaning they'll likely require several tests with the full 33 engine arrangement before safely considering a vehicle for flight. It's not impossible though. We have seen SpaceX overcome some major design and testing hurdles in a very short period of time. Typically, a rocket like the Starship could spend a decade in research and development before its first launch. SpaceX has been working on this for about two years. Starship 24, the assumed launch candidate, is well on its way to being completed, and after the successful round of Booster 7 tests last week, it seems like SpaceX is very close to testing a full engine array on another booster, probably Booster 8. Finally, SpaceX still needs to test the orbital launch site itself. With all those tests still needing to be done, it seems unlikely that the launch date will actually happen in June or even July, even if nothing goes wrong in testing, but it's not impossible. In addition to building the largest rocket ever made, SpaceX has begun training for their first spacewalk. The crew of SpaceX's future Polaris Dawn mission, scheduled for November of this year at the earliest, are ready to begin training for the mission, which will include the first ever commercial spacewalk. A crew of four SpaceX civilian astronauts will launch into an orbit around the Earth that will take them as far as 1,400 kilometers out into space. The previous altitude record for orbital crewed spacecraft was the Gemini 11 mission in 1966 at 1,372 kilometers. Once in orbit, the crew will spend five days conducting several experiments on human health and the effects of deep space exposure. This trip will take the astronauts briefly into the Van Allen radiation belt, which is outside the protective shield of Earth's magnetosphere. In addition, this flight will be testing Starlink's optical laser-based communications in space for the first time, and they will, of course, also be testing SpaceX's new EVA suit with a spacewalk. The new suit, reportedly very similar in appearance to the intravehicular activity suits already used by SpaceX crews, will have better material to protect from potential debris strikes, an upgraded visor, new seals, and joints everywhere to aid in movement. A fully pressurized spacesuit is very difficult to move around, which is why NASA EVA suits and the new SpaceX ones 
have mechanical joints to help reduce the load on the astronaut. And all of this is supported by a tether system that provides air, power, and communications to the wearer. So instead of having that huge backpack, the SpaceX spacewalkers will have an umbilical cord. The training for this mission will reportedly include deep sea diving tests for all the crew members, as well as simulation time in the Dragon capsule simulator. The two spacewalkers, Commander Jared Isaacman and Scott Poteet, and their two other crew members, Sarah Gillis and Anna Manon, have all either supported or flown in Dragon missions previously. For Isaacman, this will be his second time commanding a commercial mission after a successful trip with Inspiration4 that was the one that they filmed the Netflix series about. If everything goes according to plan, Isaacman and the Polaris program will go on to fly the first crewed launch and landing mission with the new Starship. We started the Tesla space because we have a passion for learning the unknown, and today's sponsor Skillshare is the perfect match for anyone looking to learn and connect with a community of people who share a desire to please their inner curiosity and dig a little deeper. I love plants and nature and always wanted to grow more food at home, but houseplants and veggies can be tough to care for as a beginner gardener. Luckily, Ekta Chowdhury has a course called Indoor Gardening, Grow Plants, Vegetables, and Herbs at home. In this course, you will learn how to make your own soil mix, develop an ideal watering schedule for your plants, grow flowers to support bees and attract pollinators, and how to nurture decorative plants so that your home garden is lush. Oh, and best of all, how to grow your own food at home. I was surprised by how scientific she was in her course, which made it all the more interesting to follow along and try out myself. Skillshare can help you make 2022 a year of new learning, growth, and connection through creativity. So invest in yourself and your personal growth. If you have a specific skill you're looking to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start at an unbeatable price. Right now, the first 1,000 of our viewers to sign up using our code, the Tesla space, or using my link in the description, will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. And now let's get back to the video. It's good news and bad news at The Boring Company this week. On the one hand, Resort World representatives teased details about the New Vegas Loop expansion, while on the other hand, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg has stalled negotiations for a potential Loop project in his city. The Boring Company Proofrock 1 tunnel machine broke through at Resorts World Las Vegas in February this year, in what was the beginning stages of connecting the downtown strip to the existing convention center loop. The tunnel, which is planned to eventually have 51 stops throughout Las Vegas, is expected to transport approximately 2,000 people an hour from resorts to the Las Vegas Convention Center once the Resorts World Station opens. Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority CEO and President Steve Hill noted that the project is being built in phases that will be tied together. Originally, the station was supposed to open by April 20th, but there were some design constraints that forced a delay. Hill said in an interview, it's probably the most difficult tunnel the Boring Company will ever have to produce. It turned exceptionally tightly, so it really tested the limit of the Boring Machine itself and the ability to remove the material from the tunnel. While it was turning tightly, the Boring Machine had to dive, almost like tunneling in a corkscrew. There has been no word on when the Resort World Station will be open, but we are told to expect an announcement in the coming weeks. Things are not looking so good in San Antonio, however, as various groups, including City Mayor Ron Nirenberg, oppose the construction of a boring company loop. The project, which proposes to have two tunnels run from the San Antonio International Airport and the downtown area, was negotiated by the Alamo RMA and presented to the town. The project would cost an estimated $250 million, but almost immediately, two nonprofit organizations that protect local cave formations and cave dwelling animals opposed the project. They say there are major concerns about the damage the proposed route would cause to local wastewater springs and endangered species. Jim Kennedy, who is president of the Texas Cave Management Authority, said, Out of the million and one places to build a tunnel, they had to pick the worst. There's a whole bunch of places you could put a tunnel around San Antonio without going through this specific area. There's all kinds of red flags. Mayor Nirenberg also has issues with the plan, 
stemming from a difference in focus. Nuremberg has been attempting to secure funding from Washington, D.C. for his Connect SA initiative, which is planning on expanding the city's existing advanced rapid transit system with a new route to the airport run by electric buses and is reportedly close to getting the funding it needs, about $158 million. So even though we had been very optimistic about a boring expansion into Texas, it's looking like the odds for a San Antonio loop are not in the company's favor. Tesla has officially delayed Gigafactory Shanghai's ramp up back to pre-shutdown capacity as it remains on one closed loop shift for at least another week. This setback will likely result in Tesla missing out on about 10,000 vehicles produced this quarter. After a near month long shutdown by Chinese officials, Tesla was finally able to reopen their global export hub on April 19th. Ever since then, the factory has been limited to one shift of workers who are forced to live their lives inside the factory walls. This is the only way to get around the city's strict COVID lockdown. It had been widely believed that by mid-May, the factory would be back to two full shifts that would regain their previous capacity of 2,600 vehicles per day. But according to an internal memo, this will now be put off until at least May 23rd, and the factory will remain at a productivity rate of about 1,200 cars per day. On top of its own employee issues due to local restrictions, Tesla continues to have supply chain disruption as it relies on other local Shanghai suppliers who are also operating under the same conditions. We have the final word on the saga of Tesla and India. The company has officially abandoned its effort to enter the Indian market and even started to reassign local employees. This stalemate result is pretty much what we had all been expecting to happen. The Indians refused to waive the preposterous import duties, and Tesla refused to build an entire gigafactory without first entering the market with imported vehicles from China. In the opinion of the Indian government, if companies don't want to get hit with import taxes, then they should just build their product in India. Easy fix, right? Well, not so much, because like any reasonable company, Tesla wanted to test the market by selling cars built at their nearby Shanghai factory. India is the largest global vehicle market that Tesla has yet to enter. Admittedly, there is not a high demand for luxury vehicles there right now, but it is a developing nation that is home to a rapidly growing tech economy. So there is undoubtedly some potential there. In addition to the country's potential as an export hub to the Middle East, South Asia, and Australia. At the same time that Tesla is abandoning India, Mercedes-Benz has decided to go ahead and appease the local government by announcing plans to assemble their electric vehicles in the country and enter the market. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.